It's interesting that I, I, I've focused on flowers and it goes back to my childhood. You know, living in North Ottawa, Massachusetts, being very close to, um, to what I thought was an endless forest um, was exciting. And I enjoyed picking flowers for my mom and bringing them home. I have golden memories of blueberry picking. I go and pick blueberries. Uh, I think what attracted me to the paperweight as, an, as a way to express my creativity was the floral paperweights. And in southern New Jersey, we have the Millville Lowe's. And I was very curious, how do they put a, a flower in a, a globe of glass? Starting out, uh, wanting to make paperweight, wanting to make floral paperweights, I intuitively went towards the native flowers of my childhood. I like to tell the story that um, both my parents were educated, college educated. I had a, I was a daydreamer in high school, and my senior year, you were required to go to the guidance counselor's office. So I went to the guidance counselor's office, and I told him I was interested in the vocational school. So he he gave me information about Salem Community College, and I looked at it and I thought, machinist, that's a good trade. I'll be a machinist. So when I went home at the dinner table, I said, Pop, I used to call my father Pop. I said, Pop, I'm thinking about being a machinist. He said, that's a good trait, son. So I handed him the brochure. He opened it up and he said, scientific glass blowing. You want to be a scientific glass blower? I said, well, what do they do? <laughs> so he got so excited about it, told me that he was a chemist. My dad was a chemist. So he said that they make glass instruments for organic chemistry or for chemistry. And he got so excited that the next day we went to Salem County Vocational Technical School and to look at their scientific glass program. And when I saw the students standing in front of the torches, bending glass tubing, I thought, wow, that's amazing. Look at the flames. When I was working in uh, industry, my spare time, lunch time, sometimes it's day after work, I would play with the process. I would be creative, and I loved that. And uh, nine, in 1969, after nine years of scientific wrestling, I started to experiment with paperweight making part-time. I had still had my job with scientific wrestling. What was exciting for me was to sense my floral designs were evolving. And, and to be truthful, that I could sign that work because I was a master scientific glass blower and I could spend a week on an elaborate instrument or an elaborate vacuum system in glass and get a great job, Paul, thanks. <laughs> but when, when I made a full paperweight and signed it, there was much more ownership or there was much more emotional satisfaction. Uh, when I started making full paperweights, part of the uh, challenge was trying to figure out how to do it. And that, and that really took advantage of my scientific glass blowing experience. But as the work evolved, I got very excited with the idea that I could share my interest in nature with, uh, with a floral paperweight. And seeing the flowers and the complexity of the floral designs evolved in the paperweight uh, art form was very exciting. I love the idea of making things, and I think of my work as a prayer. That's the uh, to labor is to pray is the Benedictine monks motto. It's very sweet to me because my work is my prayer. I love the idea of working with my hands. And uh, I enjoy Walt Whitman's poetry. And in Walt Whitman's master poem, Song of Myself, I can remember when I read, the narrowest tinge of my hand puts to scorn all machinery. As a craftsperson, I'm well aware of the intricacy and the miraculous nature of hands and the idea that the mind controls the hands. And, and this, the hands separate us from, separate us in the animal world. You know, uh, the Berkshire Model Museum has really uh, 
uh, introduced me to the greater world, the wider world of, of glass art, and um, introduced me to excellence within that field. Uh, I was so proud to be invited to be in an exhibition in uh, 1976. It was a, a uh, seminar, symposium. It was a glass symposium. And uh, they invited me to submit three floral paperweights. I decided that I would go to the opening. It was a seminar and I would attend. So I drove out there and it was very exciting for me because I met Harvey Littleton, Dominic Lobito, and a few other, few other players. And I saw my work in the context of Studio Glass. I kind of knew that my work was kind of outside of the, the main, the energy of the Studio Glass. And I thought, well, and I embraced, I, I picked up the energy that the studio, the studio Glass movement celebrated when they worked glass. And I thought, you know, I want my work to be thought, I want my work to be a part of that creative energy. And so that really was an eye opener for me. I can remember it was kind of an epiphany. I went into the studio, this must have been maybe 70, 1977, 78, I was working in my garage. And I said, and almost I said it to uh, my assistant, I said, damn, I wish I could have invented the paperweight. <laughs> and as soon as I said that, I realized that, you know, it was true. I'm mean, here I am making floral paperweights, and I didn't invent them. They were in, developed in Europe in the 1840s or so. So I really wanted to bring my own take to, uh, to this category. And I saw a show at the, the Franklin Institute about uh, being creative and taking chances, risking things. And that inspired me to go from paperweights to what I call the botanical series, which is uh, an upright presentation of a plant or a flower. You know, when I think of the collectors, I'm, I'm very appreciative of having an audience. You know, I tell my students it's important to identify your audience. And the role of the collectors, in addition to supporting uh, the, the creative efforts of the artists, they promote their work to their friends. Oftentimes, they'll be willing to lend their collections to museums. And, you know, uh, from my perspective, uh, Robert Minkoff, uh, who took an interest in my work, built a retrospective collection. Not only was he interested in acquiring work, but he documented my career in a handsome book titled Beauty Beyond Nature, which I believe is the catalog for this show. And I, when I think of the Berkshire Model Museum, I think of Jan Smith, because she's been, uh, over the years, as curator, of the collection. She has promoted uh, paperweights internationally and has talked at paperweight conventions, has critiqued work professionally. She's really been a tremendous resource for the, for the glass community. So she was very, very important bringing um, criticism positive creative criticism to the paperweight aesthetic. But also now, she's uh, one of the board members of the Glass Art Society. So she's really uh, been involved with contemporary glass. The Brooks and Marlow Museum connected me to, to creative freedom. That it's about paperweights, but it's also about being creative and doing and advancing the tradition. When I consider this display, people will see the evolution of my career. They'll see 50 years of my involvement with glass. They'll see a few examples from my student days. They'll see scientific glass. And then they'll uh, experience my earliest work and, and follow it to the current work. And uh, I'd like to see I'd like to believe they will sense my artistic maturity.